Dirty Moderates, welcome to Stay Dirty, Stay Moderate. So the news yesterday was all about something called the Durham Report. Um, I felt it incumbent upon me on this program to at least break down what it was, what it was looking at, kind of a basic guide, um, because you'll hear a lot about it and have heard a lot about its doings, its mechanisms, its purpose through conservative media, not as much in mainstream media, although mainstream media has done a lot to sort of break it down. Of course, the Trump era was characterized by Russia, 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 and the Mueller probe and all of that. And that brings us to the Durham report. So uh, yesterday, special counsel John Durham published a long-awaited report into how the government handled their investigations, how various government agencies, but the FBI particularly handled their investigations into a possible coordination between Donald Trump's campaign in 2016 and Russia's efforts to interfere with the election. This, this whole probe, this whole um, look into investigating the investigators, if you will, uh, goes back to 2019 when John Durham, who is a veteran prosecutor, was directed by the Trump administration to conduct essentially this investigation into the investigation. Um, again, from the beginning, it's been very controversial, very hotly disputed. Um, uh, Trump uh, was president then, 2019, obviously, and he predicted Durham would reveal, quote unquote, the crime of the century, as he put it. Classic. Trump hyperbole bullshit. Democrats, of course, largely dismiss this whole probe as politically motivated. Now, I did a lot of Fox News at that time, and and you know it was very difficult to go on Fox News and talk about any potential link between Trump and Russia uh, because the Mueller report ultimately didn't prove collusion, but it didn't exonerate Trump from obstruction. It was a very vaguely written report, but all throughout the report, our coordination and or evidence of coordination and maybe not conspiracy to commit fraud or maybe not um, things that are particularly illegal, but things that were unseemly and that overlapped um, with Russian interests, not with American interests. And of course, the Senate Intelligence Committee, Republican led back in 2019 or 2020, it was concluded that Russia did indeed interfere in the 26th election. Um, so again, a lot of this stuff was, um, enveloping our discussion and, and informing it. And there was quite a bit of evidence suggesting it, even if it didn't necessarily rise to the level of a crime. That being said, um, in the end, John Durham's report ends up bringing the FBI in for some harsh criticism, especially in the way that it relied on very raw intelligence um, in conducting its whole investigation into this potential Trump-Russia nexus, and then made recommendations for how probes and politically sensitive ones like this could be conducted in the future. Um, now, in 2019, we had an inspector general whose name was Michael Horowitz. They sort of are like the ombudsman for the government and how it behaves and our agencies behave. Well, he uh, echoed um, a lot of the claims that Durham, I should say Durham echoed a lot of the claims that Horowitz's Inspector General report found in 2019. And Horowitz, in looking at this probe, um, sent nobody to jail, and there was only one single guilty plea. So let's just go back to basics. Who is John Durham and why was he appointed? William Barr, Trump's Attorney General, asked John Durham to examine how the FBI, back 2019 again, the FBI and other government agencies investigated any relationship between or possible relationship between Trump and Russia. Durham was appointed as a special counsel in the matter uh, in 2020, ultimately, as we were in a presidential election year. And the special counsel designation, by the way, when you hear that term, it's often used, it's used regularly in Washington. It's a way for the attorney general to shield itself, Department of Justice specifically, from being engaging in any conflict of interest or being perceived as having a conflict of interest. That's why special counsels get appointed. Cause if the attorney general does it, the attorney general seems like they're doing the work of a partisan president. Cause each president obviously is a Democrat or Republican and the justice department is not supposed to be partisan. And the justice department's uh, head uh, Puba, the attorney general is America's lawyer, 
not the lawyer of the president. Okay. The time of uh, Durham's appointment, he was the United States attorney for the District of Connecticut. He was a very respected federal prosecutor. Um, he was very experienced in um, uh, investigating corruption um, within the government, uh, CIA cases, FBI cases, um, and stuff like that. So he was not a crank or a kook, uh, despite being appointed by Barr and at the behest of Trump. Now, his chief task was to find out whether anybody in these agencies, any official had broken the law in the course of all the investigations that looked into Trump's possible links with Russia. He specifically focused, though, on the FBI. And the FBI's probe, their central probe into this was called Crossfire Hurricane. And subsequently, and a corollary of that, the investigation of Mueller, Robert Mueller. Okay. Now, Mueller's report came out in 2019, and it concluded that Russia did interfere in the 2016 election, which the Republican Senate Intelligence Committee also did, by the way. However, the Mueller report uh, became, as is everything, um, a target of partisan crosshairs, especially right-wing attacks, because it did not find sufficient evidence to charge any campaign members of the Trump organization or the Trump campaign for taking part in a criminal conspiracy. And if you remember, Bob Mueller was going to send everybody to jail and get Trump, and that didn't turn out to be the case. People on the left thought Mueller was weak and wet noodly. People on the right said it was a Russian hoax all along, as you've heard Trump say, uh, no collusion, no collusion. So again, Mueller did find, though, that Russia interfered and did work with and alongside uh, and have contact with various Trump campaign officials, but he didn't charge anybody. So again, it's one of those legal things. It, it, our, our, our country, as we know, is devoid of nuance and it's one thing or the other. And these legal investigations, these governmental investigations, these probes are very complicated. Durham too. Trump of course had high hopes that Durham himself would find that agents and officials involved in any in crossfire hurricane and any part of this investigation had broken laws or done other wrongdoings. Well, here's what Durham's report actually found. Durham concluded ultimately that a bias like a kind of democratic, liberal, maybe pro-Hillary bias, kept agents from properly examining evidence, leading to what he called, quote-unquote, extremely troublesome failures on the part of the FBI. This report that he issued was based on 480 interviews, and it reviewed more than 1 million documents. If you want to read it, it's online, by the way. So... You can read it for yourself. In particular, Durham specifically said and accused the FBI of moving way too quickly with its investigation into Trump and Russia um, in 2016. His report suggested that agents were relying on uncorroborated evidence when they launched their investigation. He also pointed out, and this is an interesting point here, and, and I and I, I want to be as fair as I can with this. He pointed out that agents did not give advance warning of the evidence they had gathered to Trump's advisors, in contrast to the way that they had briefed Hillary Clinton's aides during the 2016 16 campaign. Um, and, you know, they had briefed her that in advance of the election that they had gathered evidence that a foreign actor, in this case Russia, was trying to garner, gar bleh, garner influence with her, potentially, okay? Um, Durham recommended as a result, okay, he didn't send anybody to jail here, um, but again, very tough on the FBI here. He recommended a new position be created at the FBI to help vet and ensure the integrity of politically sensitive investigations. That's kind of the big takeaway here. So, um, for people who are saying this is, you know, proves all aspects of conspiracy and, and, uh, uh the government out to get Trump. There's no evidence of that. Now, not all of, all of Durham's findings are fresh. A lot of the FBI's contact has already been rightly denounced. So let's be clear. It has been denounced and it should be in the Justice Department report in which Inspector General Michael Horowitz similarly identified what he called, quote unquote, serious performance failures among agents of the FBI. These findings, as a matter of fact, prompted Trump appointed FBI Director Christopher Wray to implement changes at the agency. So nobody's saying the FBI 
was perfect. Nobody's saying that they didn't do things they shouldn't have done, but not everything that's done is necessarily criminal. Okay. Things have to rise beyond a reasonable doubt when it comes to criminal law. So same thing. Trump and his people were obviously cavorting and, and corresponding with Russia, but it may not necessarily have been criminal, as Mueller's report found. Both sides have a hard time hearing what I just said. Yes, the FBI may have been over their skis a bit. Yes, Trump and Russia may have been too close for comfort, but are those things criminal? Not necessarily according to the law. I know partisans want to say everybody's guilty when you hate someone else, but that's also a danger in our politics. That's why I'm doing this. Anyway, I'm trying to explain this. Now, Durham, though, did go further in his criticism of the FBI than Horowitz did. Horowitz said there was no documentary, quote unquote, or testimonial evidence of intentional misconduct. And he found that the FBI had an authorized purpose in initiating its investigation into the Trump campaign. Durham, not so much. Durham said the FBI's probe into ties with the Kremlin had been based on what he refers to as, quote, raw, unanalyzed, and uncorroborated intelligence. Okay. First of all, there's nothing wrong with saying the FBI made mistakes. But when you hear MAGA world talk about it, they talk about defunding the FBI, as they're saying. And it's all part of the deep state and the conspiracy and uh, tarnishing them as an illegitimate organization. No. Government agencies are bureaucratic and they're big. They can be unwieldy. They can be messy. They can be sloppy, but they are not on the face of themselves evil or up to no good. Durham didn't say that exclusively about the FBI, but he did say that they based uh, their whole investigation into something that really wasn't there. Did he find any actual criminal wrongdoing? He found few. He was tasked with finding violations of the law, and he found few. Okay, a former FBI lawyer named Kevin Kleinsmith was sentenced to one-year probation after admitting in a plea deal with Durham that he altered a government email that was used to justify surveillance of a former Trump campaign advisor, a man named Carter Page, you may remember, who was thought to be part of a Russian spy ring. It turned out not to be true, but this fellow Kleinsmith um, – uh, on behalf of the FBI, seemed to be saying, well, we have a right to surveil Carter Page, even though it turned out he didn't. Now, Dur uh, Durham's investigation did lead to two failed prosecutions, very important. One was against a gentleman named Igor Danchenko. If you watch enough MSNBC or Maddow, you probably have heard of him. He was a private researcher, okay? And the other failure to prosecute was against a cybersecurity lawyer named Michael Sussman. Durham accused both Danchenko and Sussman of lying to the FBI, and both were acquitted in court. Again, if we're going to live by the letter of the law, let's live by the letter of the law. Now, the Republicans hear this news. They don't like that news. The Democrats hear that uh, Mueller didn't prove collusion. They don't like that. I'm just trying to be fair here. Of course, I think Trump and his team wanted to um, – have a very close relationship with Russia and do. I don't think Trump is a Russian asset, by the way. I think he wanted, and we know this, a fucking condominium high rise in Moscow. He's a greedy bastard. He's an unprincipled whore. Yes, he's a traitor, but I don't know that he's a Kremlin asset per se. You can debate that on your own time. Anyway, the results of Durham's report do contrast sharply with more than half a dozen guilty pleas or verdicts that Mueller got. Mueller did. And there was no crime of the century, as Trump predicted it would be last year on Fox News. He gave an interview, called it. Durham will uncover the crime of the century. Mueller did get half a dozen guilty pleas or verdicts. And he had a lot of indictments, something like 34, I think. Anyway, Democrats were very worried, rightfully so, I think, about Durham's probe and that it wouldn't be even handed. It would be a partisan errand conducted on behalf of our crybaby and chief Cheeto Von Trader fuckface Donald Trump. People actually, many, but not all, but there were people that accused Bill Barr of timing the probe to 2020. Remember, Durham was, at, uh, excuse me, Durham was asked in 2019 to begin this, and they waited till 2020. People thought, oh, that's to help Trump win re-election. Others said that the you know, cost of the probe 
Um, would that really be worth it? That's what we say about every investigation. Why are we wasting all this money? The party of supposed limited government does it all the time in their investigations, i.e. Benghazi. But as of December of 2022, the investigation apparently has cost the taxpayer more than six and a half million. It's according to the DOJ. Okay. Now what's the reaction to the report? Well, Report was released yesterday. I'm reporting you on a Tuesday. This came yesterday, Monday. There was little sign that Durham had earned any trust of the Democrats. Ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, for example, a congressman from New York named Jerry Nadler, described it, again, quote, as a political rehashing of what the Justice Department Inspector, a Justice Department Inspector General already made public in 2019 and said that nothing in it changed at all the outcome of the Mueller investigation. Trump, of course, claimed that the report was a victory, posted all over Truth Social, quote unquote, said the American public was scammed. Trump's insurgent opponent and... Achilles heel now, um, his little, uh, little, his little, uh, creation, as he puts it, governor Rhonda sanctimonious Rhonda asshole, who should any minute be launching his 2020 Trump said the American public was scam. Rhonda sanctimonious said that the report confirmed we already knew, and this is DeSantis has been weaponized federal agencies, manufactured a false conspiracy theory about Trump Russia collusion. In response to Durham's report, the FBI acknowledged its past failings and pointed to dozens of corrective actions, bit of a mea culpa, but good, that it already put in place, as mentioned, Christopher Ray instituted changes. And the FBI said in a statement after the release of the Durham report yesterday, quote, had those reforms been in place in 2016, the missteps identified in the report could have been prevented. So, um... That's what the Durham report said. You guys have to make your own decisions. But so much of why I do this podcast is because we're just trying to cut through the noise. Yeah, it's a lot sexier to say Trump's a Russian asset or the deep state's out to get you. I don't think either of those things are true. I think that MAGA world is especially conspiratorial and full of shit. But I do think from the beginning that there was a vengeance to get Donald Trump because many Democrats did not think he deserved to be elected, didn't think he was duly elected some instances, which I think is a terrible thing. I think he narrowly edged out Hillary Clinton, much to this country's chagrin and our democracy's fate. But that's what happened. I think they wanted to investigate him from the beginning. I do argue that he's broken many laws. I've said that. Um, he's a greedy motherfucker. He certainly incited an insurrection to overthrow the government, which is the worst thing he did, try to steal votes in Georgia. He is a uh, uber-wealthy con man businessman who has always been enveloped in some sort of sc scandal in one way or the other. That is not new. That does not mean that he is Putin's agent, although – Although he does want Putin's approval and he will always put Putin ahead of the United States. So these things are tricky. And it seems like Durham went on a fishing expedition for nothing. But it does also seem that the FBI had some work to do and they've made some changes. And maybe we should appoint a person to oversee any politically in, politically in, uh, politically sensitive investigation. Maybe we should. Then again, who is that person? And how are they free from politics? You know, so in our own partisan era, rife with anger and vengeance and lies and vehemence and division and fear and loathing. How do we ever know? We don't, but might as well look at what we can know. And we can look at what the Durham report said. We can remind people what the Mueller report said. And then the rest of it is for you guys to decide. Anyway, thank you for indulging me here, as always. By the way, make sure you're visiting us on TikTok, at Dirty Moderate Nation. Lots of cool content there. By the way, big, big guests coming up. We're uh, dropping some of the next few weeks as recordings happen uh, right now, so you're going to love that. And as always, thanks for following us. We are growing, and that is thanks to you. In the meantime, folks, stay dirty, stay moderate, and stay safe.